Hi guys and welcome to today's brand new sparkling video on sketching parabolas with completing the square. As usual, awesome to see you. This is a continuation of a video I've just recorded that deals with parabolas and quadratics and how we can sketch them using all of the different methods we've learned before. So T method, completing the square, cross method, quadratic formula, all of those exciting things. Now, have you done me a favor? Have you subscribed? It would mean absolutely the world to me. Sitting here talking to myself in a room is absolutely awesome, but I would love it if more people could see me. So get out there and spread the word that the Maths Guru is actually here for you for free. All right, so there's a little doohickey over there for you to subscribe, uh, and that would be greatly appreciated. Now, moving in with what the point of this whole lesson was, was this. By the end of the lesson, I'm very much hoping you can do the learning above me. All right, it's being highlighted with a red arrow now. So, in a previous video, we looked at the idea of factorizing uh, using what I call the T method, and I'm sure it's used all sorts of stuff. Now, this video is going to look at completing the square to help us find those four pieces of information that helps us sketch any quadratic. Now, you're going to say, what four pieces of information I haven't seen in your other video? Well, you've missed out, ladies and gentlemen. The point of it is, what do we need to know to sketch any graph? Well, for a quadratic particularly, we need to know the y-axis intercept. We need to know our two x-axis intercepts and our turning point. Knowing those four pieces of information, actually we can do pretty much everything. Now, while I said earlier I wasn't going to go over all the stuff, I am going to quickly recap how to complete the square. So those of you who've just seen me, my apologies. I love completing the square. I think it's a freaking awesome way. And for those questions where it's easy to complete the square, please, please, please complete the square. So I'm going to show you a recap on how to do that in the way that I do it. Now, the first things first is I like completing the square when the number in front of the x squared is a 1. And more importantly, when the middle number here, or that middle coefficient, is an even number. Be it positive or negative, doesn't actually matter to me. So I remember the rules are, set a bracket. If it's an x squared, write an x inside. If it was an a squared, I'd write an a. If it was a b squared, I'd write a b. Whatever this middle coefficient is, halve it and put the squared there. Now actually, we've done pretty much most of the hard work, but I have to make sure I'm going to end up with this negative 5 afterwards. Now when I do x minus 2 times x minus 2, using that foil of first, outside, inside, and last, in this situation, the only thing I'm really interested in in foil is the L for the last. What happens when I multiply minus 2 by minus 2? Hopefully, I'm going to get plus 4. But the problem is, I don't want plus 4. I need to get to minus 5. So first thing I need to do is take away the 4 that I don't need. That's this 4 that's created here. I don't need it, so let's get rid of it. And then I'm going to take away another 5, which gives me this value here. Now, I have to admit, that's not really the way I tend to do it. But I get x minus 2, all squared, minus 9 is my completed the square form. Now, I, it's also called the turning point form. There are other ways of completing a square, and I'll, I'll just do that now for those of you who are taught it slightly differently. So this is called the turning point form, and the reason it's called the turning point is because I can now read my turning point from it. Basically, the turning point here works out to be 2 minus 9. If I wanted to write that in binomial product form, and binomial product form is important to me, then I can actually realize that if I've got y equals x minus 2 squared minus 9, this is actually dops. So the great thing is, I now know that I can write two sets of brackets, brackets and brackets. This first thing always goes in the front here, x minus 2 and x minus 2. And then the square root of 9, which is 3, I put a plus 3 and I put a minus 3. So that now leaves me with something quite pretty really, where y gives me uh, minus 2 plus 3 gives me x plus 1 and x minus 5. Now that was if you wanted it in binomial product form. Is this going to help me? Well of course it will help me later on, certainly if you've seen that previous video. But for all intents and purposes and for what I'm going to do at this moment in time, I'm only interested in finding the turning point form. So. What happens if that value there is not a 1? Well, it actually is relatively simple because uh, I'm going to take 2 as a factor out. I'm actually going to divide everything by 2, move it outside. So that gives me 2, which gives me x squared inside, minus 3x, plus 5. 
Happy with that? Now, what I'm going to do, what I do now is sort of break this out and say, well, I'm going to use that and look at that as my own question. Why? Well, I've got x squared minus 3x plus 5. I've got a 1 in front of there. It means I can complete the square. Now, life gets more interesting because I'm now going to start end up with fractions. So put the x in front of here, and what is half of minus 3? Well, I'm going to write that as minus 3 on 2, all squared. Happy so far? Absolutely, I should Coco. But I now need to work out what do I need to do to the last number to get this plus 5. Well, if I was to multiply out x minus 3 on 2 by x minus 3 on 2, then the FOIL part would have me do minus 3 on 2 times minus 3 on 2 which gives me 9 on 4. So when I multiply this part of my bracket out, I get 9 on 4. Well, I don't want it. I want to get rid of that minus 9 on 4. Thank you very much. And then I want to get my plus 5 on the end, because this is effectively returning it to 0, and this is now bringing me plus 5 back. Well, I don't want to write it like that, so I have to now say, well, x minus 3 on 2 all squared. What is minus 9 on 4 plus 5? Well, I can only add fractions when the bottoms are the same. 5 over 1 becomes, well, if I multiply that by 4, I have to multiply the top by 4, which gives me 20 on 4. And minus 9 plus 20 absolutely is, yes, 11. So I'm going to do plus 11 on 4. And you're going to say, whoa, was that the end of the question? Nope, remember, that was the breakout. So I now need to put that back in. So y gives me 2 brackets x minus 3 on 2 in its own brackets squared plus 11 on 4 close brackets and we're almost there almost because what I now need to do is multiply this 2 back to get it back into a form I'm actually looking for so y is equal to 2 lots of x minus 3 on 2 all squared plus now 11 on 4 times 2 which is 2 over 1 2's go into there once Two's go into there twice, and that absolutely gives me 11 on 2. Now, while that looks absolutely disgusting, the point of it is I've used exactly the same information. What can I glean from this? Well, I happen to know that this 2 stretches my graph, and we'll do a video on that a little bit later on, unless I've already done it, and then you've seen it, and life is good, and life, wow, mind exploding. But what I know is that my turning point, which is why I'm doing this, is given by 3 on 2, comma, 11 on 2. Notice that while that's a minus sign there, there's a plus sign there, and there are very specific reasons on that, and again, dealt with in a previous video. So, that was awesome, thank you very much. How do we find the y-axis intercept from a completed the square form? Well, that's interesting. Well, I've already, you know, done examples of completing the square, but in my previous video, how did we find the y-axis intercept? If you remember, to find the y-axis intercept, all I need to do is let x equal 0. Now, it surprises me the number of people who will multiply out these brackets. I'll go x minus 2 times x minus 2 minus 4. So y is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 2x plus 4 minus 4. Now, y is equal to x squared minus 4x. Well, they cancel. And so, oh, I'm really confused. Well, actually, you didn't need to do any of that at all because I've already got an equation here. When I've completed that square, I can just put x equals 0 in here. It's a lot, lot simpler. So watch what happens. I get 0 minus 2 squared minus 4. Well, that becomes minus 2 squared minus 4, which gives me 4 minus 4. And lo and behold, out comes 0. Really? I'm telling you, it was that simple. And once again, it doesn't matter if there is a number outside of here. Yes? Same process. If I want to find my y-axis intercept, I'm going to put x is equal to 0. So y is equal to 3 lots of x plus 4 squared minus 9. So y is equal to 3 times 0 plus 4 squared minus 9. Uh, I have to do brackets first, so that becomes all 4 squared. Nearly put a plus there. That's going to be a transcription error, but thankfully it wasn't. y is equal to 4 lots of well, 4 squared is 16, minus 9. So 4 16s are 64. And so that gives me 55 as my answer. Whoo! That's a lot, lot easier, he says, theoretically speaking, ish. Yes? Now, as I say here, completing the square form is DOPS. But a point of note, 
that DOPS is a squared term minus a squared term. That minus is critically important. If there is a minus sign there, then we know that we'll be able to complete the square and then go on and solve stuff. So for example, as I've said here, this is a square term and this is a square term. So that's effectively x all squared minus 4 all squared, which means I can write this as x minus 4 and x plus 4. That's just the rules of dots, okay? So, and because I've got it in that format, if you've watched my previous video, that means there'll be a crossing point at minus 4 comma 0 and there'll be a crossing point at 4 comma 0. Thank you very much, job done. But what about this one here? Well, that isn't DOPS. And so I can't solve this. I can't write this as x minus 4, x plus 4. And if we were to sketch this graph, what you'll actually find is that the x squared graph has a lowest point going through 16. Now that's a dreadful graph, but it actually doesn't get anywhere near my x-axis here. So there are no solutions. Now a lot of people think that if they can't solve it through DOPS that then it can't be graphed. But please remember you're always looking for four pieces of information. X-axis intercepts of which there can be one or two. There's a y-axis intercept and then there's a turning point. And here is my turning point and it just so happens to be my y-axis intercept. I don't need x-axis intercepts. The graph still exists. Okay. So we've got the y-axis intercept, the turning point, what else do I need? Yes, those all important x-axis intercepts. And to be able to get that, we need to solve our equation for y is equal to zero. And again, I think with completing the square, that is just beautiful. I've already done an example before, but f of x is just a trick. That's the same as writing y equals. So if I have the equation y is equal to x minus three squared minus four, I'm going to write that as x minus 3 squared minus 4 is equal to zero, uh, is equal to y. Oop, jumping ahead. And because I'm trying to find the turning points or the x-axis intercepts, I'm going to make that equal to 0. Come on, Darren, stick it up. What's going on? Don't make any mistakes. Now I want to solve this. I want to get the x. I can't get the x at the moment because it's inside the brackets. The brackets are protected by a squared, and there's this minus 4 on it as well. So I have to do some unpacking. So I get x minus 3 squared is equal to 4. So I'm going to move the minus 4 over here and make it plus 4. I'm now going to get rid of this squared. So x minus 3 is equal to the square root of 4. And if you remember, and please remember, every time you would write a square root sign, you must, must put a plus or minus in front. Because minus 2 squared is 4 and 2 squared is 4. So basically, when we do the square root of 4, we have to remember that there are in fact two answers to that. There's plus two and minus two. So now I'm going to move this minus three over and make it three plus or minus the square root of four. Well, we know what the square root of four is. It's two. So x becomes equal to three plus or minus two. What's the plus or minus mean? Well, remember that whenever we have a quadratic, we should be expecting either one or two crossing points. And that tells me what my two crossing points are. So my x1 is 3 plus 2, and my x2 is 3 minus 2, which gives me 5 and 1. Hoorah! See, and I think this is awesome. I love doing these, particularly completing the square form because it's so easy. So now, a quicker example. Now, I'm actually going to change this question slightly. Uh, I think I mistyped this to make this 75. So, make that 75 and you'll see why in a moment. Same principle works. 3. x plus 2 squared minus 75 is equal to 0. Move the 75 over. It gives me 3. Or lots of x plus 2 squared is equal to 75. Now, I can't get rid of the squared at this moment in time. I have to get rid of the 3 first. Remember, the squared is connected to the brackets and it's the last thing that needs to go. So, I get x plus 2 all squared is equal to 75 divided by 3. And the reason I chose 75 was because when I do 75 divided by 3, I just so happen to get a beautiful 25. Nothing like fudging the question to make it right. Now I'm going to square root. So I get x plus 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 25. You see why I did this? I get a nice number. And so x is equal to minus 2 plus or minus the square root of 25 which is 5, giving my x1 value is minus 2 plus 5, and x2 is minus 2 
minus 5. So my x value is minus 2 plus 5, which is 3. And x2 gives me minus 2 minus 5, which is minus 7. And again, those are my two crossing points. So taking this all the way back to the very beginning and using one example to do all of this, let's go through it. So we need to know the uh, y intercept, the x intercepts, and the turning point from this equation. Now I've constrained the equation to make it a little bit simpler, but even if you had decimal numbers, it wouldn't make any difference. Same working out. Okay, so first things first, let's find my y intercept. How do I find that? By letting x equals zero. So I have y equals 0 squared plus 8 times 0 minus 9. Well, that's 0, that's 0. So my y-intercept comes out to be minus 9. So I'm going to write that as a coordinate, 0 comma minus 9, just so I've got it there and handy. Okay, my turning point. Turning point's the next easy one to find because I'm going to complete my square. So y is equal to, I'm going to put x plus 4 all squared. When I multiply out x plus 4 times x plus 4, I'm going to get this last number is 4 times 4 is 16. Well, I don't want the 16, so let's get rid of it. And I'm going to take away the 9, which is at the end of my equation here. So I get x plus 4 all squared minus 25. So from that, I can find that my turning point is minus 4 minus 25. So minus 4 minus 25. Pretty low down on my graph, isn't it? And now that I found my turning point, I can find my x-axis intercepts. How? By solving. So when I want to find my x-axis uh, intercepts, I want to make y equal to 0. So x plus 4 all squared minus 25 is equal to 0. Move the 25 over, it gives me x plus 4 squared is equal to 25. Uh, square root to get rid of that square. So x plus 4 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 25. Don't forget that plus or minus, really, really important. And so x is equal to minus 4 plus or minus 5. Is that, the, is that it finished? Nope. So I'm going to say my x is equal to minus 4 plus 5, and x is equal to minus 4 minus 5, which gives me x is equal to 1, or x is equal to minus 9. So again, going back and writing these things here, my x-axis intercepts are 1 comma 0 and minus 9 comma 0. Do I have all the information I need? Do I have those four pieces of information? Oh, I said, go, go. So now I'm going to dim my head down so that I've got some space. And here is my graph. So here is a set of axes, which I might need to extend or make shorter depending on. So my y-intercept is at 0 minus 9. So actually, let's move this up here. Make that a little bit longer. And so let's say this one here is 0 minus 9. There's my y-axis intercept. My x-axis intercepts are 1, 0. So there we go. There's one there as 1, 0. And minus 9, 0. There's minus 9, 0. And again, remember, I'm putting my coordinate points on. Here is a y, and here is an x while I think about labeling my axes. And finally, my turning point is at minus 4, minus 25. So minus 4 is going to be sort of here. So I'm going to put minus 4 there. Don't have to be a coordinate because it's not a point. And minus 25, we'll say, is down here. There's minus 25. I'm going to put a little kiss there. And now I'm going to label that with a coordinate. Minus 24, minus 25. Have I got my four points there? I should go, go. And so I'm going to draw... Hey, that's not bad. Moving it up so I can come back into frame. Hi again. That is my graph. I should then actually label that as y equals function of x or actually put down my equation or, or just label what that actual part of it is. But realistically speaking, ladies and gentlemen, well, that's it for this lesson. All right. So what have we covered? We have covered a continuation of uh, sketching parabolas with completing the square. Now, if you haven't had chance at the beginning and you've been so engrossed in this video, please do me a favor and hit that little subscribe button. It's been really good having you to help. There, ladies and gentlemen, is my subscribe button for you to click. Or, loading up is another video equal in excitement to this one here. It's been good. I look forward to seeing you next time. Signing off from the Mass Guru. Bye-bye.